we are often compelled to find purpose in our life. We're compelled to find a do things, right? I mean, that's the whole, that's what we're, everything we do, everything we're trained to do, everything, that, you know, every message we get, every hour, it's all doing things to fix things. And the unfortunate part is that that whole concept is based on us understanding what we should be fixing, what we should be doing, and that we would know what's best for us. There is, you know, history is a series of almost comical attempts by people to do what they think is best and then there are other consequences and there are other consequences. I mean, so it's like that whole chaos theory butterfly wing, you know, the butterfly wing across the world can trigger a tsunami. You have no idea what the effects are of, of your actions. You know, it's like, you know, oh, hey, we're going to make healthy, uh, you know, crops. So we're going to spray this stuff. So we're going to have more food. It's going to be great. Oh, we ended up poisoning all the animals. Now the pelicans have deformed beaks. Oh, oh, we're going to do this. Oh, it had this effect. Oh, we're going to do this. So it's like there's a saying, you know, if you want to make God laugh, make a plan. And so it it's kind of goes inside with that um, Course in Miracles phrase of you're in no position to judge if you're in advance or retreat. And yet, we put so much energy into making plans and executing those plans and doing things and doing those things. And so it's very possible to put all sorts of effort into something that with the intention of doing something we think is good and righteous and pure and, 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 and it has an effect that's totally contrary to that. I was watching Heroes last night, the TV show, and, you know, you know, there's all this moral ambiguity in things, and one of the characters, or some, all the characters, you know, they're, they are doing whatever it takes to try to get an end that they think is the right thing. And uh, of course, along the way, because it's TV and drama, there's consequences they didn't think about, or they're being, they're being manipulated by someone above them, and all that stuff. And I think that that is, it's exaggerated, but that's always what's happened about life. So, what's the solution? What am I trying to say? Stop trying? No. The solution is inner activism. Inner activism is the idea that it's not about doing something, it's about being something. And that thing is a vessel of love and compassion. So, if you can work on softening your inner corners, coming to a place of love, being in a place of love, you know, thinking compassionately and doing compassionately, then that filters out. Then you don't have to try so hard about making something happen, you just have to focus on being present and loving and compassionate, and then the, the real results of that are surrendered to the cosmic plan, which does have an idea which is advanced or retreat. So that's the faith that I can get behind. Not a faith that I blindly believe that, you know, without questioning that, you know, dinosaurs are invented by Moses or whatever, I'm not really sure, or that Xenu planted eggs in the genitals of the Mormons, or I don't know, you know, the point is that, that faith to me is that surrendering to a higher power. And I guess that same faith can be found in a lot of faith, in a lot of, you know, religions. You know, so when people surrender their life to Jesus, it's just a wording issue, but you're really, it's the same thing as surrendering to the cosmic plan. And so, from a Christian's perspective, I think that is, if you can do what Jesus did, act as Jesus did, embody that loving compassion, then you just have faith that the results of your actions are going to be positive. Whatever happens is supposed to happen, because that's God's plan, or the Holy Spirit, or Ugla, the mock mock, I don't know. 
So from my perspective, from my the, the, the casserole that I bring to the belief buffet and tastes the best to me is that just kind of cosmic plan and, and, and reaching that interactivism. Now, I call it interactivism because I think that a lot of people are compelled to do things with the intention of being good, but do so from a place that is not necessarily loving. I would argue that giving five dollars from a place of love is more impactful to the world than giving ten dollars out of guilt. Because money is a token. It's symbolic of energy, right? That's all, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a system to, to, to simplify me giving a bunch of corn to you or promising to paint your house. You say, okay, well, house painting is equal to eight bushels of corn. Okay. Well, eight bushels of corn is equal to 24 pretty shells. Like, let's just call it, let's just call pretty shells dollars and then it, that's our symbol and we can make a, is it fair enough? Okay, good. So that symbol, as we, as we transfer that energy on, if we transfer that energy out of guilt, we're just spreading guilt. Even as we're filling a belly, we're not solving a problem. So that's, that's why I, I, you know, I call it activism. I'm trying to, part of my faith is that I believe that when you are coming from that place of love and compassion, even if you don't make an outward plan to feed the world, your evolving heart will compel you to do that from a positive, wonderful place. Not from a coerced place of, oh, I want to alleviate some of this guilt of feeling that I have what I shouldn't have, or I'm, you know, but, but quite the, the opposite of like this, this joyous charity.